Welcome back everyone to another reaction video. Well, from time to time, I dive into the world of Watch Mojo and I see something that pops up on my subscription feed that seems like it might be historically related and might be interesting to give us something to talk about. I saw that a few days ago they had one, I think it was a few days ago, at least that's when it popped up on my feed, uh, the top 20 worst decisions in history. Now my experience with Watch Mojo is they tend to go for things that are a little more recent history rather than going back and really diving in deep and it's kind of surface level and it tends to be kind of geared toward what's going to appeal to the masses. So I understand all of that going into this, but we're going to do it anyway, just because it'll be interesting. It'll give us something to talk about. Uh, we can discuss these decisions. I haven't seen the video yet, so I have no idea what these 20 are going to be. Uh, we can discuss them, talk about whether or not we agree with them, talk about the impact we think they had on history overall. It's just a fun way to explore history together. So the link is in the description if you want to check out the video without my commentary. Uh, please do that. Let's go ahead and dive in to the top 20 worst decisions in history. What else don't they know? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 worst decisions in history. The call up of reservists. Necessary, he says, to stop the West dividing and destroying his country. For this list, we're looking at historical blunders that have us slapping our foreheads in retrospect. To be clear, most of these are military or diplomatic decisions. We also won't be including entertainment decisions or things people didn't do, because there's no limit to those. If there's a historical mistake you feel we were mistaken for excluding. I don't know, though, because when you make a decision not to do something, that is a decision, right? I mean, for example, making a decision to not go to war in a situation, that's a big decision. That has major ramifications. So I don't know. Dang. Help us rectify things in the comments. Number 20, the Bay of Pigs invasion. As the sun rises, there is a surprise attack from- You're gonna let each of these play through before I comment on them. Astro's Air Force, the B-26s are shot down. In April 1961, the United States of America aided anti-Castro Cuban exiles in an invasion of their former country. It was a complete disaster. The Cubans knew they were coming, thanks to some loose lips by the exiles. And the CIA knew they knew, yet failed to inform President John F. Kennedy. Kennedy could see all sorts of complications. There was no reason to believe that we could take Cuba over in a week. Furthermore, the original invasion plan, which had been drafted under President Dwight D. Eisenhower, called for U.S. air and naval support, which Kennedy withheld after a certain point. The debacle only served to solidify Fidel Castro's rule, while also showing communist leaders worldwide that the U.S. could be defeated. The enemy was confused. He had thought that our defense would crumble under the very first attack. He did not expect all the Cuban people to rise against him. Oh, and it made possible the whole Cuban Missile Crisis thing. Number 19. All right, so bad decision, yes. Top 20 worst decisions in history. I'm going to say this a lot. I know that. But... Come on, that's a high bar. And all, what, what, what do we have? Six, seven thousand years of recorded human history. And you're telling me that the Bay of Pigs was one of the 20 worst in all of that time? Not a chance. It was a bad decision. We know that in hindsight. There's a lot of bad decisions that we know about in hindsight that do not rise to that level. And I just, I feel like that's not one of them. Nor is a shortcut that cost the lives of a couple dozen people, which is I see where we're going now. The Donner Party's shortcut. Early autumn snowstorms trapped the wagons and they were forced to construct makeshift camps for the winter. The result was extreme suffering and starvation. One of the most infamous pioneering groups in American history, the Donner Party consisted of 87 settlers who set out for California in the 1840s. By the time they reached their destination, only 48 remained, thanks to a multitude of costly errors. They set out too late in the season, leading to unfavorable weather throughout the journey. They were undersupplied and accepted more members as they went, leading to further shortages. They didn't have a guide and took a route that was untested. There was infighting and even murder within the party. And when the group was stranded by a blizzard in the Sierra Nevada mountains, some were forced to resort to cannibalizing their deceased members to survive. The Donner Party did everything wrong. Some people came through it heroically. And some of the people in that party were 
far from heroes, and they got mm-hmm. worse as the, as the conditions got worse. Number 18. So, yeah, let's talk a little bit about that. All right, same thing. Top 20 worst decisions in history. Come on. There are thousands of decisions that cost the lives of more than 40 people in history. Thou- hundreds of thousands of decisions, probably, that cost the lives of more than 40 people in history. To say that's one of the top 20 worst, I know they're going for the sexy answers, right? The, the interesting answers that people are going to be drawn to. I'll say this about the Donner Party. Yes, it was a huge mistake. They were offered a shortcut. The shortcut ended up costing them time. If you ever go into that part of the world, basically you're, you're traveling on Interstate 80, uh, and it's a beautiful location. It's real close to Lake Tahoe. Uh, one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen in my life is that area in there. It's also right around the area where uh, recently there was the, um, uh, what was her name, Kylie Rodney, the girl that went missing, and the, the guys from Adventures with Purpose found her in the lake. Um, Truckee is the name of the town that's real close to there. Um, it's a beautiful spot, and it's it's definitely well worth your time to stop and visit the site of the Donner Party if you're ever there. And they have a monument that shows you how high the snow was. It was like stupid high. It was like 20 feet of snow. It's not a place you want to get stuck in the winter. In fact, some parts of Interstate 80 there, they actually have checkpoints. And if you don't have like chains on your tires, they don't let you pass those checkpoints at certain times of the year. That's how bad the weather gets there. Uh, but mm, again, I don't know. I don't know. Churchill decides to invade Gallipoli. Has it been a success or hasn't it? Well, it's hard to say, sir. During the First World War, fighting had stalemated in Europe, and Russia was engaged with the Ottoman Empire in the Caucasus, seeking to divert Central Powers forces from Europe and cut off the Ottomans. The Allies, with Winston Churchill spearheading it, decided to attack present-day Turkey. To reinforce naval forces, the Gallipoli Peninsula was invaded. The campaign was a colossal failure. The Allies drastically underestimated the Ottoman forces and used inexperienced troops and commanders, resulting in a 10-month-long engagement with over half a million men killed or wounded. The Allies were forced to retreat, with Britain's reputation suffering heavily over the debacle and Churchill losing his job. At least Turkey and the allied New Zealand and Australia gained some national pride over their roles. Excuse me, sir. British are ashore at Suvla. Are they meeting heavy opposition? None, sir. Apparently they've called a halt in the office. Mel Gibson. Very young Mel Gibson. Number 17. All right, so probably the worst one of the bunch so far, but I feel like we're over-emphasizing Churchill a little bit here and putting it all on him. There were a lot of factors on why that failed, and I've talked about that in videos about World War I. Uh, in fact, by the time you guys see this, um, sometime today, there should be a stream going up uh, with my uh, look at the World War I series from Epic History TV, which many of you have already seen. But uh, So we'll go in a little more depth in depth in that. But uh, there were a lot of factors. And listen, there were also a lot of other battles, a lot, a lot of other offensives in World War I that cost half a million lives and didn't, and caused half, half a million casualties and didn't do anything. Uh, the Somme, Ypres, uh, Passchendaele, I mean, that one accomplished, what, six miles of, of ground that was then lost a few months later. Uh, so that's basically World War I in a nutshell is bad decisions that cost the lives of hundreds of thousands of people. Um, Yeah, Gallipoli is remembered because of the Anzacs. It was their first real taste of war on that scale, and it's remembered there especially. But, man, again, I still don't see any of these rising to the level of top 20 in history for me. Battle of the Little Bighorn. The village was always on the move. They knew the army was out after them. And to the United States Army, to capture a fleeing village was an impossible task. Also known as Custer's Last Stand, the Battle of the Little Bighorn is one that has been romanticized in the folklore of the United States. However, General George Armstrong Custer's numerous mistakes have left its legacy far more muddled. In 1876, Custer met his end when attacking a force of Allied Plains Native Americans near the Little Bighorn River in Montana. Custer- All right, I want to stop right there real quick. I know I said I'd wait, but she talks about Custer's numerous mistakes and and This attack was a colossal mistake, and there were several colossal mistakes that were made. The decision to attack in the first place, the decision to divide his forces, uh, not properly scouting, uh, which I understand it's complicated. He was spotted, and he felt like he had to attack. Otherwise, he wasn't going to attack that soon. Um, Not waiting for the other parts of the the army's column that were coming in. It was a three-pronged attack that was supposed to happen. 
or three pronged move. A lot of mistakes there, but listen, by and large, until this point, Custer's military repu- uh, I shouldn't say reputation, his military record was pretty solid, especially in the American Civil War. He was a really solid commander in the American Civil War. He he did a lot of good things, very brave, very audacious as a commander. Uh, there's a reason why he was looked on as highly as he was during that war. Uh, anyway. Custer was outnumbered and had split his forces into several smaller groups, and the Native Americans had superior rifles. He realizes he doesn't have enough troops. Superior rifles, and again, I've made videos about this. I don't want to get into too much detail. They were superior for that engagement. They weren't superior overall in in the the nature of the fight that they had here, the weapons the Native Americans had were better. But overall, that wasn't the case. To do the job, he sends a rider south with a note calling for more men and more ammo. Custer had rejected not only reinforcements, but also several Gatling guns, which may have turned the tide of battle. His decision to attack before the rest of the army arrived resulted in Custer's death and the deaths of around half of his men. Lieutenant Including two of his George brothers. Custer and over 200 of his men annihilated in a defeat that devastated America in 1876. Number 16. Two of his brothers, uh, a nephew, and I think a brother-in-law were among the people who were killed. Uh, again, bad decision. Top 20 all time, no. This one... Yeah, I would put this top 20 all time. Napoleon's invasion of Russia. The little corporal's grand army of 680,000 soldiers strolled into Russia hoping for a quick and easy defeat, only to find the Russian forces to be constantly retreating. Using what's known as a scorched earth tactic, the Russians would burn down villages so that the pursuing French army would have no supplies to feed their vast numbers. Eventually, winter came, and the French forces were subject to starvation, hypothermia, and eventually, defeat. It was a harsh lesson, but one that every military leader has since taken to heart. Never underestimate the environmental factors when fighting on enemy soil. Number or to put it another way, don't get involved in a land war in Asia, <laughs> even though that's Europe technically where he was. But uh, anyway, yeah, definitely top 20, top 10. You can make an argument it's even higher than that. But uh, the ramifications of that invasion and what it meant because basically that was the end of Napoleon. Yes, there's more fighting that goes on. There's a lot more battles after that, but it's all downhill from there. The The ramifications of that for the next 200 years of history cannot be overstated. Massive, massive change in the landscape of what happens in Europe because of those events. 15, the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. Now it's time for the Russians, or in this case, the Soviets, to take a beating, as the 1979 invasion of this Middle Eastern country was decidedly not a win for them. Wanting to protect communist interests in the country, the Soviets sent over 100,000 soldiers after the assassination of the president of the Afghanistan Communist Party. However, due to the alien nature of the communist way of life, an Afghani and Muslim resistance rose up with monetary aid from a certain Western capitalist arch enemy of the Soviets. The and this is... It's all part of the Cold War, right? The Cold War, in many cases, was a, pr a series of proxy wars between capitalists West and communists East. And, uh, you know, Vietnam's a part of that. Korea is a part of that. Afghanistan's a part of that. And there are a lot of other places, too. The ensuing conflict would result in the death of almost 15,000 Soviet soldiers, a Soviet withdrawal, and a continued civil war in the country. Number 14. The yeah, um... If, and I'm saying if because I'm not sure it's the case, if you can make a direct correlation between Soviet failure in Afghanistan and the eventual collapse of the Soviet Union, maybe you can argue that. But I don't think it's there and I don't think it's that significant. So, again, I'm going to have to say no on that one. Spanish this one Armada's maybe. failed invasion of England. The difficult question of how to transport a Spanish army safely to England in the face of a very strong and active English Navy. The summer of 1588 saw the formation of a Spanish Armada, which set sail for England in an attempt to overthrow Elizabeth I to restore Catholicism to the nation. However, the Spanish and Portuguese vessels were engaged in the English Channel by an English and Dutch Armada, 
Although the Spanish Armada had larger ships and more men, the defenders had more ships that were more maneuverable and better armed. The Spanish were defeated, forcing a retreat. Not only did they fail to restore Catholics to power in England, but their failure arguably emboldened Protestants across Europe and led to the decline of Spain as an international power. Now Drake had proved that the English designed warship was superior to anything that the Spanish or anyone else could put to sea. Number 13. Yeah, I think I could, I could agree with that being top 20. Um, was it a colossally bad decision? No, it was just a failure. Um, so it's less about the decision and more about the outcome, which I guess without the decision, the outcome isn't there. So um, I won't try to overanalyze this too much, but that is a significant turning point in Western history in terms of the decline of the Spanish, the, um, the, the rise of the British toward the massive empire that they're going to build over the next 200 or so years. Um, Definitely the impact that it has on Protestantism because it secures Protestantism in England uh, from there on out. And like she said, it emboldens Protestantism other places. So I wouldn't argue against that one. Teen, the Fourth Crusade. Pope Innocent III called for the retaking of Jerusalem by Christians. The holy city was then Muslim controlled and the plan was to attack the Ayyubid Sultanate in Egypt, the largest Muslim empire at the time. However, a series of blunders led to the Crusaders doing nearly the opposite of their stated goal. When not enough Crusaders embarked from Venice, the army that arrived there could not pay for passage. Furthermore, these same Crusaders sacked Zara, a Catholic city under Venice's instruction to recoup their investment. The Pope excommunicated them. Then, these Crusaders retook the Orthodox Christian-controlled Constantinople for Alexios IV, who promised them support in retaking Jerusalem. However, they sacked the city when he was deposed. The Fourth Crusade only served to weaken Christian-controlled Byzantium. Number 12, yeah, the Chernobyl- Yeah, but, and, and we've talked about that, that crusade in other videos. Um, is there a long-term impact Mm, yes and no. I mean, it, it's it's like a lot of battles like, say, Gettysburg or Midway, where it doesn't necessarily change the outcome. Normandy, you could throw in there too. doesn't change the outcome, maybe changes the timeline of the outcome. Like, for example, the U.S., if Midway doesn't happen... The U.S. still wins the war in the Pacific. Well, I shouldn't say the U.S., the allies, because there were other allies, too. I don't want to downplay that. The outcome doesn't change. The timeline of how quickly the outcome happens does. Um, things like that. Normandy fails. Germany still loses World War II. The post-war world looks very different, though. So things like that. Uh, so does it change long-term the makeup of Europe? I don't know how much it does. Does it change the timeline for how that looks? Maybe. Bull meltdown. Comrade Dyatlov. Top I apologize, but what you're saying makes no sense. Raise the power. No. I won't do it. It isn't safe. The Chernobyl nuclear disaster is arguably the world's worst nuclear incident that wasn't intentional. On April 26, 1986, the number four reactor at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant exploded during a safety test. While the disaster was part By the way, can we just take a moment right now to talk about the fact that yesterday Time on Twitter posted an article that talked about how the, uh, the dam disaster that is happening right now in Ukraine that caused all that flooding could be Ukraine's Chernobyl. In case you're not sure, Chernobyl's in Ukraine. All right, anyway. Partly the result of failures in Soviet safety procedures and the design of the reactor itself, operator error also played a major factor. Extreme conditions were created due to the negligence of those in charge. Additionally, the test was conducted by the less experienced night shift at the plant instead of the day shift. The end result was an unprecedented catastrophe that had it not been contained, could have poisoned most of Eastern Europe. At long last we have arrived a couple of things I want to say about this before it finishes. Number one, if you haven't seen the Chernobyl series, fantastic. Jared Harris, I love him and everything he does. Uh, Richard Harris's son played Grant in the Lincoln movie. Um, 
what else has he been in that he's been really good? Oh, it was King George the Sixth in The Crown. He doesn't look like the king, but I loved him in that role. I thought he he epitomized the personality of the king so well. Um, just a great actor. Love him. Um, but yeah, again, top 20 worst decisions in history. Had it gone that way, had things not been contained, and had it had that impact on Eastern Europe, then yeah, maybe. 12345 explosion. Number 11. Moctezuma II welcomes the Spanish. Moctezuma Xocoyotzin, also known as Montezuma, was the emperor of the Aztec Empire in present day Mexico. In 1519, Hernan Cortes, a Spanish conquistador, set about invading Moctezuma's empire. What does Hernan Cortes find? A very well-planned city with an entire government structure. A city we know in its time was one of the largest in the world. Yeah. Cortes may have started with only 500 or so conquistadors, but by allying with local people discontent with Moctezuma's rule, those numbers swelled. Eventually, however, Moctezuma invited Cortes into his capital, Tenochtitlan after he claimed to be a royal representative. This proved unwise, however, as Cortes soon took Moctezuma captive. And by welcoming Cortes, Moctezuma had effectively spelled the beginning of the end for his empire. Lands were divided, and with the same stones and the same hands of the native people, they built a new city. Number 10. All right, so first of all, Tenochtitlan and that whole area, amazing stuff. I mean, the Aztec Empire and what they built, incredible. Again, Bad mistake doesn't change the outcome of what would have happened. If Cortes and his men had been wiped out by the Aztecs, the Spanish just would have sent a bigger army with another conquistador, and then another one, and then another one. I have no doubt in my mind whatsoever that all it did, all it would have done would have been delay the inevitable. So again, I just don't feel like I can put that in the top 20. Mao's Great Leap Forward. Murdering millions of your own people is always a bad idea, but that's just what happened in China during the early to mid 20th century. In an attempt to rapidly industrialize the nation, the communist leaders tried to institute a demand for crops that the people could not meet. The resulting famine caused deaths around the country. However, famine was not the only cause of death during the Great Leap. Many reports of torture, beatings, and suicides have surfaced throughout the years. An exact death toll is nigh impossible to nail down, but it's been estimated at anywhere between 23 and 55 million people. And no amount of progress is worth such a steep cost. Number. All right, so let's wrap our mind around this for a second, right? Because we spend a lot of time when talking about history of the 20th century, talking about the Holocaust, and rightly so. That's the kind of stuff we need to talk about so that we can make sure we never allow it to happen again. I am not in any way, shape, or form downplaying that. Okay, What are we talking about with the Holocaust? 15 million people or so. We, we focus a lot about 6 million Jews, but there were millions of other people as well. Gypsies, homosexuals, the disabled, um, Russians. A lot of people died in that. And we're talking about an event that killed multiple times that many people. And we don't talk about it. I get it. Part of why is because it happened in one country that is in East, you know, is in Eastern Asia and it's not involving Europeans. And so here in the West, we tend to focus more on European history. But how are we not talking about an event that killed many times over what killed uh, what were killed in the Holocaust? 100% top 20 worst decisions ever, absolutely. Number nine, the toppling of Mohammad Mossadegh in Iran. Once again, we travel to the Middle East, but this time it's some devotees of capitalism that would make the mistake. The mission was known as Ajax in the US and Operation Boot in the UK, but the principles were the same, protect Western oil interests in Iran. How? By overthrowing the democratically elected prime minister and installing a monarch more sympathetic to the US's and the UK's demands. That's exactly what they did. The CIA even hired local mobsters to incite riots. What followed was the death and subjugation of many of the Iranian people and a period of unrest that would eventually lead to the Iranian revolution of 1979. Number eight. Yeah, um, bad, real bad. I will not argue strongly against that one because of the, it, honestly, because it's so recent in history, I think we don't fully understand yet the impact of that. 
we've seen it over the last couple of decades, a lot of further issues that have happened because of that. And I think it's always a bad decision when democratic nations get into the business of overthrowing uh, or helping overthrow democratically elected governments just to get one that's more favorable to your own cause. Uh, that's always a bad decision. And I think that's probably one of the worst examples of that. Uh, so, but I think long term, we would probably have to say that that's up there. Lyndon B. Johnson's micromanaging of the Vietnam War. The year is 1963. The U.S. is in the midst of a brutal war in Vietnam, and their president has just been assassinated. In steps Lyndon B. Johnson, who, just two hours after the Kennedy assassination, assumes office. LBJ promptly takes the old adage, if you want something done right, you have to do it yourself, and applies it to the Vietnam War micromanaging it, and regularly ignoring advice from military advisors. It wasn't until Nixon became leader of the free world that those best suited for the job were handed the reins, effectively loosening the president's grip on the fight in Vietnam. Number seven. Not top 20 uh, at all. In fact, if you want to talk about a president micromanaging a war being a mistake, I would put Lincoln at the top of that list. I feel like Lincoln's micromanaging of the Civil War probably prolonged the war, probably hamstrung some of his leaders, um, probably was too politically motivated at times. I could go on and on. I'm trying to just skim the surface here because we're moving on to other things. But Johnson micromanaging Vietnam is not a top 20 all-time bad decision. George W. Bush invading Iraq in 2000. First of all, I know we're going for sensationalist headlines here, but George W. Bush did not invade Iraq, okay? He was the president when the when a coalition force of multiple nations invaded Iraq with the blessing of the U.S. Congress, who all voted for the authorization of that force based on the same bad intelligence, okay? I'm not trying to downplay George W. Bush's involvement in this, but this is a really misleading way to say this. Whether you believe it was motivated by weapons of mass destruction, the 9-11 attacks, or a need for oil, we can all agree that this 2003 attack on the Middle East was divisive for the American people yeah. and devastating for the Iraqi. It yes. kicked off a costly eight-plus year Iraq war, which, rather than fighting terrorism, arguably fostered it, most notably giving rise to ISIS. On the home front, it turned America into a nation divided, with one half of the population supporting the war and the other half vehemently against it. In other words, some were a little bit country and some were a little bit rock and roll. Shout out to South Park fans. Yeah, um, I think in hindsight, we can all agree it was a very bad decision. And I think for the people of Iraq, especially, yeah, they were free of Saddam Hussein. But man, a lot of people died and a lot of people suffered because of the war that was brought to their uh, to their country. So, um, again, worldwide top 20 no, it's a little U.S. centric, a little Iraq centric. If I'm an Iraqi, I probably would say that, yes, it is. And I wouldn't argue with you if you said that. Number six, Austria-Hungary decides to start a war. In 1914, Archduke Franz Ferdinand, the heir to the Austro-Hungarian Empire, was assassinated by Bosnian Serb nationalists. Austria-Hungary couldn't let the killing of their next ruler go lightly and decided to attack Serbia in retaliation. However, with Russia allied with Serbia, they wanted support from Germany in any conflict. By delaying their attack, Austria-Hungary ensured that Russia and its allies, France and later the United Kingdom, entered the conflict as well. All these events spiraled into the First World War. Granted, advances in military technology and the numerous European alliances ensured a massive conflict was bound to break out but Austria-Hungary was the first to declare war. Yeah, I agree. I think I think it's fair to say that had it not been the assassination of Franz Ferdinand, it would have been something else. Something probably would have triggered that, but the fact is this is what did trigger that. Uh, this is what lit the match that set the powder keg of Europe off. It could have been something else, but we'll never know. Um, and it was a series. It's very complicated. There were a lot of decisions that made this happen. And we've did, done a series on that um, extra history series on the seminal catastrophe uh, is phenomenal in showing all of the decisions that went into making that war happen. But 100 percent top 20, I would say top five. Number five, Russia invades Ukraine. 
the denazification and demilitarization of Ukraine. That was his outrageous justification for all this. The first based on a lie, the second a euphemism for invasion. Russia invaded Ukraine in February of 2022. Despite Russian claims of Ukrainian Nazism, it was more likely to prevent Ukraine from joining NATO, regardless of the reasons. The invasion has been costly for both countries and the world economy. Tens of thousands have been killed on both sides. A refugee crisis has developed, not only in Ukraine, but also in Europe, as thousands seek to flee the draft. We are not afraid. We are ready to defend. Our country. Plus, countries worldwide have imposed sanctions on Russia, destroying its economy. This is an ongoing conflict, so the full extent of how bad a decision it is cannot be stated at this time. However, even the ramifications thus far are horrendous. This road lined with Russian tanks, destroyed when the Ukrainians were able to take this town back. Number four. All right, so recency bias is heavy with that one. Do you know how many hundreds and hundreds of conflicts have been more devastating and killed? Probably thousands of conflicts that have been worse and have killed more people than what has happened. I'm not downplaying it. This is this is terrible. It's terrible for Russia. It's terrible for Ukraine. It's terrible for the soldiers on both sides who have been thrust into this conflict. It's awful. But there's a lot of recency bias. It is impossible to know. Uh, what the ramifications are of that conflict right now. And it's certainly not one of the 20 worst decisions of all time. This one might be. Japan brings the United States into World War II. All the fighting's confined to this area. As you can see, this is their road to Australia and this is their way of controlling the sea lanes to America. During World War II, Japan had invaded China and Korea. This prompted harsh sanctions from the USA, Britain and the Dutch, who all had territory in the Pacific and or ties to China. This effectively robbed them of many necessary resources, including oil. Rather than lose face by withdrawing, Japan decided to declare war on the United States, attacking Pearl Harbor in Hawaii in 1941. This was a huge mistake. The USA retaliated with a costly and brutal war in the Pacific, leading to millions of deaths in the only instance of nuclear weapons used in warfare. The long-term effects on Japan were immense and still ripple through the country today. Look at them all. I mean, we, 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 we chewed them up. They just kept on coming. Number three. Yeah, um, wouldn't argue with that one being a huge mistake. Uh, understand the reasons why they did it. Understand what the thought process was there uh, and the situation that Jap Japan was in in that circumstance. And would the United States have eventually gotten into World War II? Uh, maybe, at least in Europe, perhaps, but we'll never know. Definitely a bad decision. And so is this. Three, Hitler invading 100%. Russia. There's and a again, quote that reads, did he do it by himself? No, I, it's a weird, I know what they're trying to say by wording it this way, but this one's probably more accurate than saying George W. Bush invaded Iraq. But um, yeah, huge mistake. And yes, it's the Soviet Union, not Russia. It's those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. And that's exactly what the Nazis did in 1941. Despite studying Napoleon's first invasion of Russia as reference, the Nazis' attempted invasion of the Soviet Union resulted in a catastrophic loss of life. And in the eyes of many, it was the downfall of the Third Reich. Just like 100%. Napoleon, they planned on achieving a swift victory that never came. Operation Barbarossa, as it would come to be known, lasted over five months and resulted in over five million deaths. Number two. Absolutely one of the top 20 worst decisions in history. Um, really don't need to say too much about that. It was the death of the German war effort. It really was. It took a few years, but bringing a country into the war with whom you have a non-aggression pact and with whom you are trading and getting your oil. And yes, I understand all of the arguments about Hitler wanting the oil and all of that stuff. But listen, there's no getting around that being the decision that sealed their fate in that war. Angering Genghis Khan. Many angered the great Khan during his reign over the Mongol Empire, but none so spectacularly as the Alauddin Muhammad II, Shah of the Muslim Khwarazmian Empire. The result of infuriating the Khan meant the destruction of Alauddin's empire. But keep in mind that didn't have to be the case. Genghis wanted peace with the Shah, saying, quote, I am master of the lands of the rising sun, while you rule those of the setting sun. Let us conclude a firm treaty of friendship and peace. 
The Shah refused, killing some Mongolian envoys. The result was, as previously stated, less than favorable for the Shah. It just goes to show, never mess with a Mongol. Yeah, we did a whole series on uh, Genghis Khan, which is really fascinating. And uh, listen, I don't fully know all of that and what would have happened otherwise, but if that is the trigger event that caused Genghis Khan to go on his rampage, then it's 100% one of the top 20 worst decisions in history. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe like to our channel Ronald and ring McDonald? the bell to get notified about our latest videos. There's the rock. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Victorious Allies Impose Harsh Terms on Germany After World War I The Treaty of Versailles the moment that would define the next half of the 20th century, the moment that would lead to the rise of fascism, the Nazis, and eventually the Holocaust. After a long and brutal World War I, the victorious allies were tasked with punishing the losers, and punish them they did. The most important factor of the treaty was that Germany had to take total and complete blame for the war, which meant they had to disarm, and pay reparations to all affected countries. This would virtually bankrupt the European country and set the stage for a very sinister time in human history. Check out these other- If you're wondering my, why the face, I saw Woodrow Wilson's signature and then I saw his picture and a couple of those images, so yeah. Um, all right, so Versailles top 20, absolutely. Um, I know there will be some that will argue that, hey, really the, the the sanctions they put on Germany weren't that bad, but um, the, there had been worse. And you could say, well, yeah, Germany did the same thing to France after the Franco-Prussian War. And all of that can be true while still acknowledging that Versailles led directly to uh, create the conditions that allowed for the Second World War. There's no getting around that. You could probably make an argument that the world's a better place if Germany wins World War I just because of what world got created. But you know what? Let's say, and this is getting into alternate history, let's say the Central Powers win World War I. Do we then see the rise of what happened in Germany in France or England, for example? Does Oswald Mosley in the UK rise and become the national socialist leader that plunges the world into World War II? I don't know. Who knows? We could argue all day about that stuff, but what we do know is that Versailles definitely had a huge impact on creating the conditions that allowed World War II to break out in Europe. So um, I would definitely put that one in there. What do you think needs to be on this list in the top 20 worst decisions of all time? What do you think they got right? What do you think they got wrong? What do you think they missed? Let me know in the comment section below. We'll talk about it and continue the conversation. Thanks for watching.